Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I will uh, I will talk about uh, the the what we call the language uh, services that we provide uh, together with uh, the repository and all the things which are in there. But the services are uh, separate; uh, they are run separately, and they uh, they uh, serve a di a different purpose. So what what uh, what do we call services to an application? So first of all, uh, these are about natural language processing. This was our traditional strengths in the institute even before we had the infrastructure, and of course we continue to develop these tools, and we are trying to provide state of the art. Um, accuracy and, and precision of these tools for uh, the, the language technology community and also to all the fields in digital humanities uh, as well. So uh, I think uh, uh, who, people who know us know that we work a lot in machine translation, uh, but also in various text analysis tools and through our partners and, and now also locally, uh, we work with uh, speech recognition and some other tools related to other media like multimodal uh, analysis and information extraction. So these, these are the basic areas where we are developing tools. And then uh, uh, for some of those tools, we also need lexicons. So we have lexicons at, at all the morphology, syntax, and semantics levels. And especially at the morphology level, this is uh, integrated in some of the most accurate tools for morphological analysis. I mean, these lexicons are mostly for Czech, but uh, some of them are also for other languages like English, uh, Polish, uh, Arabic, and, and other. We are and and based on these uh, uh, based on these tools, we are running uh, services where the tools are accessible 24 hours a day. Uh, but on top of that, and also as Pavel has mentioned, we also allow sort of online access to the data that are stored. To not not all, but we are trying to give access to almost all the data that we have in the repository, which are sort of legally available for everyone to search in. And these, these services we call the search services. Uh, so both the corpora and, and some of the lexicons are searchable through um, an API as well as through web browsers. Uh, for, the, for the search, we have three main tools, context, which we uh, use the tool which was developed at the Czech National Corpus and we cooperate with the Czech National Corpus and, and you will see a presentation of, of that a uh, little bit later uh, about some other tools from the Czech National Corpus but the one that we also share is called context for, for sort of simple but feature rich search uh, uh, of, of words in context. The, the other tool is PMLTQ, which is a full-fledged tree-based or, or structured search in, uh, in annotated corpora. And the newest addition to the tools is TATOC. And there will be a separate talk by Martin uh, about TATOC. And of course, we also provide uh, the federated content search, which is accessible from the VLO at the Clarin Eric level. Now, uh, very often uh, uh, people ask, what is the difference between tools and, and services? Uh, because the word services is, of course, a very generic word, and you can imagine also uh, uh, like human services. And, and of course, that's part of us, of, of our task too, to, to provide uh, uh, knowledge and, and education. But, but now I'm talking about the technical services and software tools and software applications. So uh, the tools, uh, what we call the tools, uh, these are software packages which, which implement uh, some problem in natural language processing or beyond, which can be simply downloaded from the repository. Um, the models for them can be also downloaded uh, under similar, uh, you know, as open as possible licenses. And then users um, can install these tools at their computing environment, either their own or they can, uh, they can use any cloud services if they really want to run it on large amounts of data. But uh, the advantage is that the users can integrate these, uh, these tools in any way uh, they wish in their environment, in their other software that they use. They can connect it, they can write uh, any conversions that are necessary and so on. But of course, the disadvantage is that for people who are maybe not so technically oriented, uh, this might be uh, uh, a problem. Uh, they, they, uh, they, they do not know exactly the 
uh, the um, requirements of the tools. I mean, the, you probably, um, many of you have probably done that before, and you know that it's uh, that it takes some effort to actually install a, a tool developed by someone else in your own uh, environment. So that's why we also run uh, services. Now for, for the technical services, uh, what, what it means that we take a tool which is available at Lindat, typically developed by our staff or our partners in the project, and we run it um, as a as a sort of a server type of thing in the background. So in, in a similar way that people are running web pages, so they have to run a web server, which then serves the, the pages and reacts to user input. So in our case, uh, we are running the tool and we provide just with, with but, but if we only talk about services, we are not providing uh, the, the interface to them, but we provide an API, uh, an application programming interface uh, in a standardized way through the REST uh, and RESTful APIs. And users can then use that API to call the service remotely. So they still have to be technically um, apt to, to write a script that can call the service and, and send the data for processing, the data that the users want to process. And, and they, they, get, they get it back in, again in some synthesized format like JSON, and then they can uh, do whatever they want with them. So they, as opposed to the tools, they do not have to install the tool on, on, on their own computing environment. So they can use any environment they have, even completely incompatible with the tools, uh, if they can uh, call the service remotely. And that's, uh, that should be possible from almost any computing environment uh, uh, that they, the users might have. And then finally, we are also running applications, uh, which, um, which uh, uh, are uh, connected to the services. So the application, in fact, is, um, if I can call it, uh, just a user interface, which is accessible through a web browser. Uh, uh, it should work for most of the popular web browsers like Chrome or Mozilla or any other. And then uh, uh, there, is, there is a special page and for each service, we have a link for the application, which is called Run. And you can, uh, if you click on the link, you get a web page with, which, uh, which is a front end to the, to the service running in the background. And you can either enter the data directly, like type them in, uh, there is an there is a input window for that, or you can upload a file depending on the service. And then the, ser the, the, the service running behind it will process the file and will return it uh, to the application, format it in various ways, which you, can, which you can interact with and you can say, no, I want a different type of formatting. And then of course you can download it from the page or you can download it as processed by the, by the service. And and that's something we want to try, uh, we want to do for all the services that we have. So at the moment, uh, all the services have their uh, web interface, uh, that its application, and people can access the service uh, through, that, uh, through that application. So here is an example of one of those services, uh, which we called UDPipe. Uh, so it is a, a pipeline of tools which are based on the, on the universal dependencies tree banks. And it provides uh, the six, well, or maybe seven, depending how you count it, basic uh, language analysis tools, which come, which start with a tokenizer, which uh, splits the text to words, um, identify sentences and sentence breaks, run the morphological analyzer and, and extracts the morphological features. Then there is a post tag, pop, uh, power of speech tagger and morphological disambiguator um, in, the, in, the, in the universal dependency sense. Uh, languages which uh, provide data with, uh, you know, lemmatized data in the UD set uh, are also, uh, tr you know, we also trained a lemmatizer on, on for, for those languages. And then, of course, because uh, the UD, um, UD data set is tree banks, then we also have a dependency parser, including the, the dependency relation labeling for all these languages. So now uh, we are at version 2.6, uh, I think. Uh, the UD version will soon be 2.8, and we will, of course, add that too. And this, uh, and, and you can, you can uh, or any user can uh, input a text, and uh, the, the service will 
will parse it. And, and the window on this slide uh, is a window for for the application, the, for the user interface, um, where you can actually type a text or upload a file to, to process it. So this is UDPipe. And uh, then, as, as I said, uh, we, we develop uh, um, engines for machine translation. So we, um, so we are also running uh, some of the language pairs, not all of the language pairs, but I think we have seven both ways and one one way uh, where we provide machine translation. Of course, we concentrate on Czech as, as with all the tools that, that usually comes first. Uh, but in this case, we have uh, six other languages paired with English and we provide an engine. Now, not all, all the engines are um, of the state-of-the-art quality, but at least the Czech and, and French uh, almost is a state-of-the-art system, which is based on so-called qubit architecture, uh, which is which is in turn uh, based on the Google's transformer architecture. And by uh, by clever uh, training, cleverly training the system, uh, we are uh, at, at you know reaching um, for both Czech and in, uh, and French in combination with English uh, human performance on on the translation task. So, so here is an example. There is also a web interface, an application. Uh, uh, of course, this is very similar to Google or or Bing or other other freely available translators on the web. And you can cut and paste, or you can upload a file, and it will get uh, eventually translated into the the language you you select as the as the target language. So this is about uh, translation. And then uh, we have several other services and applications like uh, uh, name entity extraction, um, uh, coherence text detection for check, uh, spelling uh, corrector and grammar uh, corrector uh, also for check, and some other tools which you can find in the lin.cz slash services list. Uh, um, and again, all of them can also be tested through the web. Now these tools and, and well the tools are in the repository, but the services um, are not part of the repository. They run. They need uh, they need computing hardware uh, to run them on, and we are lucky because of the the way that the um, that Linda is funded, that we can uh, actually have the hard the necessary hardware to provide these services for free, at least for the research community and for some small uses, uh, for anyone. And we are running it as, as as you know part of the cluster on which we also do the development on the tools and the teaching and so on. We also run those services. So we, so some of these services, specifically the machine translation, now has to use GPUs. Um, the the rest usually uses CPUs, but the new UDPI will also will use uh, uh, GPUs to to get uh, speed. Uh, the the services are optimized to be able to run. Uh, well on small text, so no long initialization or reading of models that has to be all preloaded and ready for people to use. But it can also process larger text. And if you really need the huge text, then it's probably be better to go for the tool, which as I said, there always exists a tool behind the service which you can download and, and do it uh, somewhere else. Uh, we do some load balancing. I mean, we, we, we cannot scale at the moment for really, really large uses like uh, the big, uh, big uh, multinational companies can, but we do some load balancing in order to be able to uh, process text in parallel. Because the usual way that people use it is that they test it and then they send some batch of, uh, of, um, of requests uh, through the API and then, uh, then we have to run it and we don't want to limit other users at the time when there is some uh, huge processing going on. So we do, we do, we take care of, uh, of some of it and, uh, and it's uh, one of the uh, uh, difficult parts of the of the infrastructure for running the services, but it's there. Then, of course, we also have to be sure uh, that people can uh, can process the data, and then both them and us are sort of staying uh, out of trouble. <laughs> so we have uh, designed and consulted with lawyers the terms of use under which we provide these services. Um, so essentially, as, as usual, we provide no warranty. We, we, uh, people can use it for research purposes um, or for small demonstration or testing uses, uh, but, uh, but the price is good. The price is free and we provide it uh, uh, for, for anyone uh, for free. And for commercial use, um, we have sort of two steps. Uh, I should say that the commercial use is not 
you know that widespread at least not yet uh, but uh, but uh, we have a link for people who want to use it commercially to go and negotiate with the proper unit at the university for larger uh, uses and for smaller uses uh, they simply fill in a, a short contract and they can use uh, the services uh, almost right away within a day or so when the contract is signed by the university so this is all i wanted to say about services Thank you.